Can I be frank with you guys? Like, really frank? I do not like the Yes era. And do you want to know why? Here's why. So imagine growing up loving something so good, literally perfection, whether a movie, a show, a video game, and they, they just changed something about it that made you fall in love with it in the first place. Imagine you leave your favorite park and the next thing you know, it's been replaced by the double titty nipple Sasquatch slide. You know what, on second thought, I think I prefer the titty nipple slide more in this case. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is that the Yes era to me was absolutely unnecessary. And when I look at this era, I think I have more questions about it than it's willing to give me answers for. And it's not that I don't like it because I have some personal little vendetta against it. There actually are some things that I quite enjoyed about it as a kid. But now that I'm grown and I've matured and I can now look at it all in retrospect, I don't think I like it for what it was ultimately trying to replace if that makes sense. CN City is something that can never be replaced, nor duplicated, and any attempt to do so will never capture the same magic that that era had created. And as I've grown here on YouTube and my audience has grown a bit, I've been able to see the age demographics as to who watches my videos. And it seems like to me, if you're 23 and up or somewhere around that age demographic, then you most likely grew up watching the Yes era. So I understand that a lot of you may have nostalgic and sentimental value with it which is completely fine but this is one of those cases where i myself have to surrender my nostalgic feelings and look at this all objectively like was this the next best move for cartoon network moving forward was it a necessary change but what exactly are my gripes with this era and why don't i like it compared to the other eras that i've reviewed Am I being too harsh with my judgment of this era or is it all justified? Well, we're about to get into it right now, so don't go anywhere. Who's that Pokemon? It's Fred Fred Parker! Yes! Cartoon Network's Yes era was launched on April 3rd, 2006 and would be the network's fourth official era. And the most notable thing about this era is that it opted to use assets from the Now hold your horses, hold on. I'm gonna get to these four in a sec. But the biggest thing about this era is that it took a lot of the CN City assets and ideas and used them for the bumpers of this era. Which would have been completely fine, but I think my first gripe on all this is who on God's green earth opted for the city to look like this? Who? What the f is this piece of? Shit? It's like they were trying to make a new version of CN City, and midway they saw a Skittles commercial and based their whole design off of that. Or maybe their goal was to just have kids experience seizures early on. The combinations of red and purple did not clash well with the yellows and oranges and honestly, how can you not puke watching this? Cause that's honestly what it looks like. Puke! Like these look like the colors I throw up after mixing all the drinks at the fountain at McDonald's. How the wiki describes it though, the city's new design consisted of different assets of CN City such as the buildings and landmarks and gave them more of a refined look. The color scheme, as you can see, would use more dark, flat, and quote unquote, psychedelic colors. Now I looked up what psychedelic colors were and <laughs> which I think honestly explains when I look at some of the now slash then bumpers, it's like I got hit with a flashbang. But yeah, besides this era looking like Rainbow Road, this era decided to have these four characters essentially be the poster children for this era. In that being Cheese, Billy, Blue, and Fred Fred Burger. You can basically look at them as the four lords of this era based off their heavy presence in the promotional marketing for it. Now again, I wouldn't have a problem with this branding choice, you know, using certain characters to push uh, an era for promotional reasons. And I get that. It's been done before. But my goodness, did this era do these characters no justice. Looking at how these characters act in the bumpers, not only do they receive their own standalone bumpers, but I don't know about you, but they don't seem like they should be there. 
like i get the sense that the characters i'm seeing aren't themselves or they're too much of themselves like they're like their portrayal just seems off take this all in comparison with the era we got before cn city might have had the best portrayal that we have ever seen with most of the cartoon network characters blue's portrayal in the cn city bumpers was very well written to how he was in the show real bratty a goofball constantly doing things that would get him into trouble you know the whole nine yards like it's very believable that he used himself as a flag or even paint on the sign of foster's home in the yes era bumpers he's beatboxing but he's not really beatboxing the bumper is just edited to make it look like he's beatboxing he's also a certified truck driver in this one okay and some of the more normal ones don't really do anything clever with him nothing that blows me away honestly but i get it you know because the whole idea behind these bumpers were to have characters basically doing random things or maybe i i don't get it like why would they be wasting five seconds of your time 10 seconds of your time doing nothing like it's just i look at what we got before and everything had a purpose to it but i'm gonna get more into that in a sec with with the previous era take another example billy billy is a character that is really hard to freak up he's not that complex to portray cn city portrays billy in the best possible way in less than 10 seconds a simple bumper of him eating trash that's it straight to the point and hilariously effective some of the other bumpers before had him at his house in the cemetery areas that very much fit his character now i don't know what the yes era was thinking putting billy in these long drawn out bumpers but it was not the right move like i get it he's supposed to make you think man what the heck is this kid talking about my goodness he's stupid but here it just doesn't hit the same and is it me or does this animation look off with billy like i can't tell if this is cartoon network or pbs kids with how they animated him the animation wasn't very billy and mandy like for lack of better term and then you have cheese why is he here exactly and lastly you have the main man mr yes himself frederick frederick burger <sighs> so you mean to tell me that we traded in a majority of the cn city roster for him this guy this demonic green elephant with a nacho fetish him to be honest i'm, I'm gonna tell you right now Fred Berger was never funny to me growing up. I never saw him as comedic. At times he just felt shoehorned in as, you know, we gotta put one of those characters in that, oh, you know, he likes nachos and you know, he, he's there for comedic relief. He, he's there to make you laugh. I wasn't laughing. And the fact that they use this man for majority of the promotional bumpers is extremely jarring to me. As a matter of fact, looking at some of these posters that were used to promote the era, Was it funny? Did it make you laugh? It didn't make me laugh. And I cannot stand to watch something as annoying as this again. I like music. I do. I like. I like music that goes like la 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 Cartoon Network, since its inception, built its branding around a slew of diverse characters, both young and old, big and small, original and acquired. It never really placed a focus on one specific character to lead the pack. So to see the green elephant, who isn't a main character in his respective show, might I add, it failed to set the tone for the rest of the era. And it kind of makes me wonder, why does he get an era based on...
this thing make it on Cartoon Network. Like, he, he looks like Johnny and Omi had a baby. And that baby was hooked on hard crack. Hard laced crack. Like, whatever kid imagined this thing to come alive, they need to be put in jail. Like, I just remember watching Cheese as a kid. And I just remember him being so annoying. Like the whole, the brother ladies episode wasn't funny. Annoying. Him doing that scream annoying him not getting his chocolate milk annoying this thing is no matter what position you put him in he's annoying the only thing i'd probably say i liked about cheese the most was that game on cartoon network.com you played it was like a mario style game they made of him you know you had to collect the chocolate milk or whatever whatever and even then like that's all i could tolerate from this character this character needs to be burned with fire or put back in the lab that it broke out of hold on guys I think I might have just found cheese all grown up. Oh my god. Oh boy. Oh man. Boy, the years were not kind of cheese. See guys, this is what I mean. This is what hard crystal meth will do to you. One thing about all of the eras before this point is that it was quite apparent what the network was aiming for as far as its overall theme. The checkerboard era had a 90s centric checkerboard aesthetic. The powerhouse era was bombastic and in your face with super cartoony animations. The starburst era had burst of light appear and CN City had an interconnected world full of cartoon characters, both young and old in this city where they can interact with each other. And for future eras that I'll eventually get to, their themes very much fit them as well. Cartoon Network, yes, on the other hand, I'm a bit confused about. Like, you, you base this whole era around Fred Berger's catchphrase? Yes! Y yes! To what exactly? Yes to nachos? Yes to senpai? Like, ye like yes to what? Y yes to what? As for the rest of the bumpers, it featured some of the other characters saying and doing random things in front of these plain red backgrounds which I will comment on in a sec. Some other bumpers would also have some text commentating on what said character was doing. Obviously not as clever nor as funny. I just kind of felt like these were just really stating the obvious. I think these types of bumpers were trying to be funny. They were trying to be witty. I think they just ultimately missed the mark. Like putting characters in front of these plain red backgrounds with no unique design just felt uninspiring. Like. Where's, Where's the pizzazz? pizzazz? And I know what you're thinking, but Murray, the powerhouse era had plain backgrounds. Why can't the yes era do it? Listen, because the powerhouse era had an organized method to their bumpers. Any background color you saw in them, it wasn't done by accident. And it wasn't solely a design choice. It was done with a strategy. In this case, the red backgrounds indicated the late and midnight periods until it was ultimately replaced with black and dark blue because the older TV sets couldn't withstand the color red too much. The Yes era had no other reason to use solid red backgrounds except for it being solely a design preference. And if it was a preference, then it wasn't a good enough reason to go all the way with it. Easily the bumpers I disliked the most were the ones that had characters doing things in front of these red backgrounds except the things they were doing had been done before in their respective episodes. Like Eddie banging his head in the dirt, Erwin breakdancing, or Billy's little clown Tangelo meltdown. These obviously were all just recycled clips edited in front of these red backgrounds, which to me is just a lazy way to create a bumper. And I just have like little things here that kind of bother me about the era that I ask questions about. Like why is Eduardo pixelated in this one? And why is number one the only operative featured in this bumper? Where's the rest of the crew? Like, do we really need to keep up the theme of bumpers being random when they come off as more confusing than they do funny? <laughs> Anywho, moving on. The music used for this era had more of a techno style beat to it. And on top of that, Nicole Vicious, who was the original voice announcer of CN City, would be phased out in exchange for Johnny Lancaster as the official voice for this era. Now you may be thinking, Murray, there clearly are a lot of things you don't like about this era. I mean, you keep comparing it to CN City and it can never reach that level of popularity. 
all right all right i mean i believe these type of judgments are warranted based on what it was trying to copy but anywho is there at least one thing you like about this era absolutely you see one thing about it is i will always give cartoon network a plus for its quality of cartoons because during this era the programming would consist of ed ed and eddie codename kids next door the grim adventures of billy and mandy foster's home for imaginary friends Hi Hi Puffy Amiyumi, which would end that year of 2006. The Life and Times of Juniper Lee, which would end in 2007. Camp Laszlo, My Gym Partner's a Monkey, Ben 10, Squirrel Boy, and Class of 3000, which both would premiere in the year of 2006. Now, if you remember, CN City's online marketing showcased sneak peeks and interviews of Squirrel Boy and Class of 3000, just to break you in on the next set of cartoons to arrive, which I really do appreciate. I also like how when the Yes Era did use certain assets of CN City with little to no change, they did it right. The movie theater bumper, the bumper with the candy store definitely took me back to the olden days of CN City. Now notice how there were no bumpers that featured characters like Dexter, Johnny Bravo, Cow and Chicken, you know, a lot of the OG characters. And that's because most of the original cartoon cartoons were rerun on the Cartoon Cartoon Show and the Top 5, and some even on Boomerang. This would also be the era where we'd see original live action shows such as Out of Jimmy's Head, along with its standalone movie, Reanimated. I remember watching Out of Jimmy's Head and also remember not being as interested in it. You know, Cartoon Network at this time was still trying to get in with the times with modern live action programming. And we see how later on throughout the years, that wouldn't really work out. <laughs> The fall of 2006 will air Cartoon Cartoon Fridays, which is always a plus in my book, and this era would feature the super popular Cartoon Network Invaded. Cartoon Network Invaded was a crossover marathon that showcased episodes that had an ongoing storyline of aliens invading several cartoon characters' worlds. Now, I fondly remember the Ed, Ed and Eddie episode being a part of this list, especially since I remember being genuinely spooked seeing the paranoia of aliens through Jimmy's perspective. What I find real interesting, however, is that around September of 2006, the bumpers that featured Fred Burger and Cheese were phased out in exchange for newly animated bumpers bumpers that had characters in the form of stick puppets, doing karaoke, playing catch, and things of that nature. You know, they were still trying to keep the randomness aspect of the bumpers. But I can almost guarantee that the execs themselves saw how maybe jarring and annoying Fred Burger and Cheese came off and just decided, uh, these two ain't really cutting it for us. We're gonna have to get them out of here. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that if Cheese and Fred Burger fused together, they'd be called Cheese Burger. I think when they started to steer away from being a different version of CN City, a lesser, lazier version of CN City, might I add, and started to at least try new things with their bumpers is something I can respect. You know, seeing characters as stick puppets or doing karaoke may not have been the most creative idea, but I mean, I'd take that over the tacky comedy we got with the four lords of the Yes era in front of the red backgrounds. You know, they at least added some pizzazz to it. Another bumper that would be added later on was the Lunchbox of Doom, which was a direct reference to an episode of Billy and Mandy. The bumper just consisted of the lunchbox opening up and showing a couple clips of aired shows and then closing. Nothing really much to it. And honestly, I'd say this era starts to become more tolerable. Using recycled clips and recycled assets from the previous era made the Yes era feel uninspired. And that of all is my biggest gripe here, I'd probably say. I generally think this era didn't know what it wanted to be at first. It knew for certain that CN City was heavily adored and money could still be made from it. It knew that Fred Burger and Cheese, Billy and Blue were fan favorites. And it tried to change and add on to something that didn't need any more improvements. CN City was near perfection from top to bottom. And honestly, I would have taken an additional two years of CN City rather than a new era altogether. Especially since the fact that there is still content being released of CN City assets on several social media plugs that never made it to TV. What I can't get over, however, is the leadership of this era. The beginning of the Yes era would be led by Jim Samples. You know Jim Samples, the one mostly responsible for getting shows like Samurai Jack, Kids Next Door, Camp Laszlo, Juniper Lee, Ben 10, on the network, just to name a few shows. You know Jim Samples, the man responsible for the launch of adult 
Swim and acquiring Family Guy as a top show for the block? If you don't know who Jim Samples is, well, you probably should because he'd be one of the key factors for the launch of CN City. And the reason why I'm putting such a big emphasis on him is because the Yes era would be the last era under his leadership. So I find it really hard to believe that he is possibly responsible for greenlighting this pseudo semi adaptation of CN City. Outside of the debacle of the Massachusetts bombing, this by far was his lowest point. Near the end of the era on February 9th, 2007, Stuart Snyder would serve as the new president for the rest of the era. But yeah, the era would be defunct on May 31st, 2007, serving for less than a year. Which, if you're not counting the Starburst era as legit, then this would be the network's shortest era to date. And that's honestly not a surprise considering, as I said, this era really had nothing that was worth stickering around for. Up until this point, I have found every era of Cartoon Network to be great in some way, shape, or form. Whether it be its design choices, bumper styles, programming, or other little key features. But with what the Yes era offered, or lack thereof, it wasn't enough to pique my interest or even give it the benefit of the doubt. So as for my official score for Cartoon Network eras, in my opinion, this is Cartoon Network's first L on its record. Boo! Making it a 3-1 deficit, if you're not counting the Starburst era. But all in all, Cartoon Network was coming off the high popularity of CN City and tried to add on to that popularity with the Yes era by incorporating new designs and bumpers while still using assets from its previous era. The network tried to benefit off the popularity of comedic characters by making them the focal point of the bumpers, but ultimately put them in a position where they were extremely ineffective. Trust me, I know there is a faithful fan base out there that loves this era. I know this may have been the era that first piqued your interest in the Cartoon Network, and that is completely fine. In an episode of OKKO OK titled Crossover Nexus, there's even a reference to the Yes era. So I mean, there's still some fanfare that remains of it. As I said, I've pointed out things that can be taken out of this era and enjoyed, but as for me seeing its failure to innovate with new and fresh designs, the wrong characters being pushed down our throats, and the unoriginal and unfunny bumpers, all of this would contribute to the Yes era feeling like an uninspired project and ultimately an unnecessary era. But would Cartoon Network bounce back and pick itself up from a fall from grace like the Yes era? I mean, I don't know. This wouldn't be the first time we'd see a 3-1 lead be blown. But as I alluded to earlier in the video, some things are best left untouched if you can't improve upon what made it so great. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel and comment down below. Did you watch the Yes era growing up? If so, did you enjoy it? And what are some things that you liked about it? I definitely love to know what you think down below. Once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video and don't hate. Motivate and God bless.